Today we are here at Greenleaf Nursery and joining me again is Mark Andrews and we're looking at Greenleaf Nursery from a whole different perspective. Literally, you got me up yep. here on the deck, but right. we're also talking about something a little bit differently today too. We're talking right. about the retention and the irrigation that occurs here at Greenleaf. Tell right. me a little bit about how all of this got established initially. Okay, so back in the late 80s, early 90s, the ownership of Greenleaf Nursery made a commitment to try to be good stewards to the environment and basically do water retention recycling here at the Oklahoma Division of Greenleaf Nursery. And the real impetus for that was that we are located right on the shores of the Illinois River, which is, at that time, was the only scenic river in the state of Oklahoma. And you also, you're like on a peninsula that backs up to exactly. Lake Tenkiller too, and right? And then, you know, right, right in front of us, then Lake Tenkiller begins. Yeah. So we're right at the very beginning of this area, which, you know, is high profile and used for recreation. So a lot of, you know, visitors and tourists come to this area. So of course you guys have to water plants and fertilize right. plants and eventually that drains out of those plants, right? Is, right. is kind of the concerning point, right? right. Exactly. So the way we irrigate, we irrigate with what, what's called overhead irrigation. Because mm -hmm. everything's in containers, Everything's right? in containers, <laughs> yeah. you know, on ground beds and yes. everything. And we did studies when we started this whole process, and basically 45% of that water runs off away after we've irrigated the crop. The rest of it is taken up by the plant, you know, in the container media itself. Some infiltrates into the soil on the ground beds where they're located, and some of it just evaporates off as well right. during so, the irrigation process. So 45% loss. I mean, you're losing right. water, which is a resource. Right. Also the nutrients Correct. out of those, um, the fertigation of that too. Yes. So what yeah. was the solution? So, you know, the solution was we weren't going to go ahead and change our irrigation system. But what we did is we basically implemented a water retention system. So we went ahead and, you know, with a lot of our ditches that we had and on site, what we did is we made those concrete ditches and diverted the water into retention basins. Okay. And then the water from those retention basins is stored and then recycled back out onto the crops. Okay. So the water doesn't leave the nursery location at all. It just keeps going around and around in a, you know, recycled in a circle, so, essentially. So you have several hundred acres here. How many right. retention ponds do we have now? It's... Basically, we've got 10 basins here okay. now. And some are fairly small. They may only be, you know, an acre or two as far as area goes for the basin. And then we have two large basins, our original main storage basin, which was designed to hold 30 million gallons of water. And then we have a brand new basin up at the very top of the nursery where we're expanding and that one will hold 40 million gallons of water. Okay, well, there's a lot of questions that come with that too. And mm -hmm. that's kind of one of the reasons why we're here is I think a lot of times when you think about a system like that, it's installed, it's taken care of, right? But right. there's maintenance that goes oh, along there's a lot with of, that. There's a lot of work involved with the whole process. So, you know, one of the things that we've got is how do you move water from basin to basin? And so with the smaller basins that I mentioned, we have automatic floats and so that kicks the pumps on. So once the water level reaches a certain point, the pump kicks on and moves the water up to another basin. Why would you need water in one of the basins if it's just there to collect the water? The reason is twofold. Number one, because they're smaller basins, uh, the potential for nutrient buildup in those is greater. Mm -hmm. And the second reason is that with plant pathogens that are waterborne, you, if you pull out of those basins, you stand a much greater chance of spreading that disease out onto the crop. Okay. Whereas if you move it to a larger basin, we can take advantage of natural organisms in the basin water to attack the, uh, the plant pathogens. Mm -hmm. And plus how we pull the water out of those bigger basins minimizes the chances of spreading waterborne diseases. Okay, so a bigger body of water kind of dilutes the it nutrients. It dilutes it down, it dilutes the nutrients down, it puts the uh, pathogens in a different profile. And so like with our big basins, we draw the water from basically the middle of the profile. So if a basin is 30 feet deep, we're drawing water from 15 feet below water surface. Okay. And that seems to be the cleanest water within a basin area. Okay. So you're not getting what's settled on the We're bottom? Not, right, or... exactly. We're not so sucking up a lot of sediment from the bottom 
and we're not catching a lot of stuff that's floating on the surface. Okay. So have you changed your fertilizing practices at all? I mean, yes. I don't see that any of these ponds look green even, so that's well, a good sign, right? There's a couple of things related to that. So yes, when we did this entire system, we switched from a basically a liquid feed program to a slow release fertilizer program. Okay. So what we do now is we incorporate slow release fertilizer into our growing media and that slow release fertilizer basically releases a small amount of nutrients every time water moves through the profile. Okay. So it's slowly releasing it throughout the entire growing season. So that reduces the amount of nutrients basically being leached out of the container dramatically. Right, right. And so our nutrient loss is reduced tremendously. Now, now that we've got the system completely enclosed, if we have a particular plant or block mm -hmm. that needs to be fed, we can still go ahead and do overhead feeding with that plant or with that block because we're catching the water and not releasing it back out okay. off site from but the nursery. But that's not your all of, no, over approach our basic anymore. approach right now is slow release fertilizer. All right. Well, and if anybody's been here to Greenleaf, I know you've got a nice pond out front, which I right. guess has actually got a purpose. It's well, a retention it does. pond, It's right? a retention pond, and we do go ahead, and that water from that pond, or basin, I should uh -huh. say, goes back up to our main storage basin. We don't irrigate out of that one. Okay. But out front there, we do have a fountain. Right, and, I thought it was just for show. Right, all these and years. that's what a lot of people think. But really, what the fountain is for is to reduce algae buildup in the basin itself. Because, as you know, if the water were just sitting there, then we would end up with an algae bloom potentially mm -hmm. within that basin. And the algae bloom would affect the water, it would also affect our plants as we use that water ultimately down the line. So the fountain is there to aerate the basin, move the water, and minimize the amount of algae that builds up in that pond or okay. basin. All right. Well, I mean, you guys have a lot of topography here on this site right. and, and cars are going all the time. So yeah. there's a lot of ditches and things that have to be traversed. Yes. Um, and, and, you know, what about, I know you have a lot of gravel here. So let's talk about just the ongoing maintenance of some of these ditches, irrigation right. ditches. So with the, with everything, there's maintenance, maintenance associated with it. So our ground beds are basically clay gravel based. Mm -hmm. And with the topography we've got, with the slope and everything, uh, that material moves. And so it moves into the ditches, the concrete ditches. So we'll occasionally have to come through and clean the ditches out. And uh, we have tin horns that go under the roads or whatever. Those have to be cleaned out. And then at each basin, we also have clean out spots where ultimately as the water comes in, it slows down. That's where the sediment drops. And so we have to clean that out and uh, basically maintain that. And so, you know, we constantly are going around to the different basins, cleaning out those areas and getting the sediment out and then reusing that gravel later mm -hmm. on. Well, and I know now in our current day, of course, a lot of people are aware of nutrients going into ponds and streams and things mm -hmm. like that. But again, this was something that you guys did several decades ago and right. kind of were at the cutting edge of doing this for nurseries right. and actually received a few awards for this yes, as well. Yes, we did. Yeah. So we received several awards, both from the state and from uh, the EPA as well for doing this work. And it was at that time, there were some other nurseries doing something similar to this. Uh, but really, like for nurseries out where we are, we were one of the first to do it. Well, you know, so. and we're so proud that Greenleaf is right here in our backyard. And, you know, not only are you leading the industry with plants, but also right. with your practice as well. Thank you right. for sharing this with us, Mark. You're welcome. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.